and we're back guys i'm your host good energy i give you the rundown on tennis coverage every single day and before we get started guys just want to say thank you to all those that support the channel look it's been a long journey bringing you updates and tennis coverage every single day we have six thousand videos again thank you for the love and support um and i can't thank you enough but let's get down to the nitty gritty now before we get into this matchup i want to make you guys aware that mira is fighting for an olympic spot now listen there's a ton of rules when it comes to determining who's going to get these olympic spots but listen guys a lot of that stuff is it's like a precautionary if they need to go there they can but the reality is going to be very simple who's ever who's ever got the most points at the end of this french open tournament is going to get in one two three four simple as that now yes there's a lot of other factors they can determine and that's set in place for you know those rare examples where you have maybe a star player that's sitting on the outside then they can use that wild card but listen if mira if she essentially wins her next two matches she will bump out anastasia pavlyuchenkova for that last spot to represent russia i think that will be huge for mira mira is exciting to watch guys and we have to keep it simple here she is the future of russian tennis now what about corneva Look, she's big time too, and we all know she beat Mira, but not every player can make that proper adjustment from juniors to the main tour, and we're seeing that she's struggling with that. Yes, she beat Mira for the Australian Open juniors girls title, but she's struggling to make that transition from the main tour, and this is why I think players like Brenda Favertova and her dad and Patrick and everyone that's involved with her career... This is why I think they have her focusing on the main tour because I'm, I'm pretty sure she could have won some junior slams. They have her focusing on the main tour so she can make that transition earlier. And I do think she will be a French Open Slam champion someday. And I said, what did I say? She'll be by the, by the age of 21. I do think so. But let's also factor in that's a four-year window. I do think Coco's going to get a French Open championship. She won the juniors title. Iga mentioned so many times she watched Coco hold that title up because she lost to Kat McNally. And this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. There was a time where Kat McNally was better than Iga. Iga's transition from the lower level to the main tour, it's been... I mean, you you just don't see that happen in sports. And I, I talk a lot. Anyone that's played sports their whole life, I've played sports my entire life. Anyone that's played athletics their entire life, you know. When you come up with players, you're normally around the same level, even when you reach adulthood, from kids to adulthood. The players that dominate as kids, they dominate as adults. To see Iga, you know, losing to Kat McNally and now losing to Potapova. And now Potapova can't even win a game off of her. To me, that's just mind-boggling. I, I've never seen something like that happen. I, I don't even know how it's possible. I've never seen someone that I was better than in a junior just dominate me as an adult. I've never seen that. I mean, you know, you know that saying is, look... You are what you are. Things are always going to be about how they've always ever been. That's the saying. Coco dominated as a teenager. She's doing the same thing on the main tour. But to see Iga's trans... I mean, Iga's previous coach... I mean, who's he working with? Shelby Rogers now? He said Iga doesn't practice, like, insanely. He said Iga's practice effort is about the same as any other player he's coached he said there's no he said she doesn't put in like this extra effort that he's never seen before so for her to just just all of a sudden to start dominating I just I I don't know I maybe she's putting the work with Thomas 
I don't know. I just it's to me it's a mind boggling. I can't really wrap my mind around how she's dominating these players. And it's like I just I don't know. I don't know how she's doing it because when I watch her play, I don't I don't really see now she's really good at attacking opponents back foot especially the backhand side she's really she's really good at going across the body but I mean I the the net play she struggles a bit she's not really great from the deep ball I mean she doesn't have a lot of power on her serve she does have good placement but her forehand's really good she speeds opponents up her footwork's really good on clay but it's just I don't know I just think that the last since that 21 season, you know, where she was at the finals in Mexico and she was the weakest player there, something happened going into that 22 season. I, I just, because I watched that finals and I covered that finals and it's just, Ego was clearly the weakest player there. I mean, Paula Badosa, we're talking about Paula Badosa, Garbina Muguruza, an older player. And that Conteve, really good. Barbora. Sabalenka, Sakri, I mean, Sakri was better than Iga, you know, Sabalenka was better than Iga, and it's just to see how within a two-month span, just something changed and clicked to where she just started dominating the tour, it's, it's interesting, and someone's going to have to figure this thing out, and me personally, I think the ladies are starting to raise her game, especially Coco, she's starting to raise her level to the point where It's like you can see you can see if you watch tennis and this is why I went like I've had at least 20 comments today from people saying that Coco's not good. She's not a good player like the comments that Coco gets is just ridiculous. Like I don't even entertain them anymore because it's just it's people trolling and look I'll troll back with you. You know if you want to troll I control but the reality is you can see. Coco's level starting to improve her double faults are reducing and look she's got to stand on business all right you know the saying she's got to stand on business but based on this current tour there's too late and look to not have Coco in the in the big three is just a joke let's just be honest it's a joke now I could see why you would want Rebecca in the big three because she dominates Iga we have to have someone look the tour needs someone that can dominate ego we just need it because i tell you all the time serena was so dominant to the point where i i wasn't even watching her play that much right and i think a lot of people are in the same boat here right it's like serena's playing this person okay she's gonna win i'm probably not gonna watch it but i'll watch the the replays, I'll watch the highlights, I'll watch the trophy ceremony, but I'm not going to watch the match because he's just going to win. Now, I think the tour is better when it's more competitive. I mean, if you take a look at the last, what, two to three years of Grand Slams, we've had a nice mix, you know, with the exception of the, the French Open where he has dominated. We've had a nice mix, and I think the tour is good when we have a nice mix because these trophies, are they're going to different countries and regions. And it's getting people more involved in the sport. I'm just a little sad that Anz didn't win any of those slams. I would I would have... Now, I told you that Rebacken was going to beat her at Wimbledon. I did give that pick away because the numerology was clear. And by the way, it was a lot easier than nowadays with these algorithms. It's, they make it a little tougher to figure out the numbers. Um, but ev- everything's connected. We're all connected. You guys have to understand that. But nonetheless... I'm disappointed Anz never won a Grand Slam. I would love to see her win a Grand Slam. I just think that gap, that window's closing. But the tour is more competitive when different different ladies are winning the Grand Slams. I do think that is good. Now, Karina, uh, I'm sorry, not Karina, Serena, different era, right? I think that was a time where women's tennis, and look, she's the greatest of all time. You can't deny her that. But I think she was so great. She had so much star power. I mean, we're talking like the Jordan of female sports, right? She had so much star power that, look, we we could live with her dominating. We were used to it. But I think now, this day and age with technology and social media, I think we need to see a diverse pool of, 
of different ladies dominating. I think it's good because the sport, we're bringing it to the next level. It's a global sport. We need different champions. That's just my personal opinion. Now, will Ego win the French Open? We're going to get to that in a minute. But let me get back to this match here with Mira and Dreva and Favara. If Mira wins her next two matches, she's going to be in the Olympics. But there's a catch to this because there's someone else that's also from Russia fighting for that last Olympic spot as well. That's Alina Evanesian, who's a defensive, a defensive presence. But let's look at Vavara and Mira. Now, Vavara wanted out of Russia, right? She Listen, there's a lot going on in Russia. We all know that. They're, they have the war with the Ukraine. And the reality here is, look, they want that land back, okay? It's, it's a military strategic plan. They want that land back. You know, if they have to go to war, if they have to attack someone, they don't want to have, you know, the inability to defend from the east, west, north, and south. Whereas currently with the Ukraine there, that presence there, they literally have to go around the waterways to defend or attack. They need that land. And it's it's a mess. It's complicated. And at the end of the day, I'm good energy. It's all about spreading love, peace, and positivity. Right? That's what we're here for. Look, this we're here to help others and make other people's life better. So this situation with the Russia and Ukraine, I think it's sad. It's tragic. And there's a lot of children that have come forward and said, look, I don't want any part of this. And we need to listen to them because they're the future. Just like mirrors the future of Russian tennis. Vavara and Mira, they've never played. Now, Vavara, if you're not f familiar with her, 19 to 15 on the season, 15 to 6 on clay. She's here, guys, after taking out the Greek goddess. Yes, I started that name, guys, in, in three sets. Bernardo Perez straight sets, Arena Bigu in straight sets. Now, Bigu is a defensive powerhouse. She's very tall. She's a good ball striker. She gets balls back. She's a good defender. Good clay player, uses a lot of top spin, but so does Mira. Mira uses a lot of top spin. She's smart for her age at only 17. She's got a left down the line that's very fast. She's here in the fourth round after taking out Betcast. Vika. If she beat Vika, she can definitely beat Vavara. Let's be just be honest. And Peyton Stearns as well. Now, Peyton Stearns, a little bit more green. I would give the edge to Vavara in terms of overall game, if you want to compare the two, even though it's tough comparing different styles when you're talking about different matchups. Mira, 16-7 and seven on the year, 9-3 and three on clay. I talked a lot about Mira, how she has literally nearly a 90% win rate on clay for her career. Nearly an 80% win rate overall for her career. Here's the difference. Mira's a lot more aggressive than Vivara. But I've seen last match with Vivara, she was really aggressive when it came to Begu. I haven't seen Vivara that aggressive. But I do think Mira's going to have the overall strength advantage. Which is odd because she's only 17. Yeah, she's 7 years younger than Vivara. But listen... I think Vivara can win a set. She's a huge underdog here. She's playing well. The pick I'm going to give you is to take Vivara to win at least a set. Take her on the set spread. It's plus money. I think it's a good pick. Can Vivara win the match? I think she can win the match, but she has to serve well. There was a time on tour where Vivara was on the don't back list because of her double faults. It was Vivara. It was Elise Mertens, it was Camilo Osario, it was Gabriela Elena Russa. Those players were double faulting too much. I said stay away from them. But she's improved, much like Coco's improved her double faults. Vivara's serving well. I'm going to take Vivara to win at least a set. If she plays defensive minded, she can keep these wrong these these rallies longer, and she could potentially squeak out a set. So that's the pick, Vivara plus the set spread. Next, we have Jasmine Pellini, a.k.a. Little Italy, taking on Elena Evanesian. This is going to be a good match. Now, if you're not familiar with Elena, she's patient. She's very disciplined. And uh, thank you to the subscriber that reminded the fans that she's not initially from Russia. Um, 
but she represents Russia. And again, she can make the Olympics, but she has to make the championship match. That's right, guys. So she has around 900 points. She's going to need the full 1,200 points for making it to the championship match. So if she does not win her next couple matches, she has no chance to make the Olympics. She has to make it to the finals. That's her only chance. And listen, guys, she can do it, right? I mean, she's so close, but she's got to take out Jasmine Fellini first. And if you're not familiar with Jasmine, I've been telling you guys the last several years, she's one of the fastest players on tour. She's fin- Things are finally coming together. And I say this all the time. In life, you never know when it comes together. Just keep working hard. Stay disciplined. Stay focused. And when it's meant to be, it's going to come together. And for Jasmine, it's come together so beautifully. She's having a good season, guys. 19 and 10, 7 and 3 on clay. Last year, she had a 43 win season. I've been backing her for so long because I, I've, I've seen her speed. And it's like you can't teach speed. If you have the natural God-given abilities and the gifts, just stay disciplined and continue to work and it will all come together. And even though Jasmine, look, she's a late bloomer, right? A lot of people don't realize she's she looks young. She's small. Uh, that's why I call her Little Italy, but she's 28. And I think she's playing amazing. Alina, a lot younger, right? Uh, Alina is uh, what? I want to say 22, something like that, 22, 23, 11 and 10 on the year. She came into the French Open having a losing season, but she's turned that around. And she's here in the fourth round after taking out Lin Zhu, amazing defensive player, and a Blinkova, who her form has looked better. And I say it all the time. Look, another Russian player. She goes as far as her conditioning. She's a really good shot maker, but... Look, and it's not really her fault. She just has to show a little bit more discipline, but the tour is in a different region every week. It's tough. A lot of, unless you're like Coco or Iga, Sabalinka, these multimillionaires where you have a runner that can prepare your diet and your food and your meals, it's tough. The tour is in a different country every week. A lot of times you're eating what you can get, and I think. Kat McNally said this best. Uh, Yes, Kat McNally beat Iga that year in the the French Open where Coco won it. Kat Kat McNally said it best. She said, a lot of players think that we eat gourmet meals all day. She said, no, sometimes it's fast food. And I can tell by some of the players where their weight is uh, fluctuating that they're not really taking care of their diet. And again, it's tough when you're in a different country. A lot of times you may not like that food. So you'll eat something you're comfortable with. And that may not be the healthiest. Sometimes it's junk food. However, when they on when they're on site for the tournament, the WTA does provide, you know, like breakfast and lunch and stuff like that. But it's when they're at the hotels, it's the late night, stuff like that where the meals can be a bit unhealthy. And if it's if it's full of calories, look, you can gain weight. It's very easy to gain weight. You know, I've talked about how I've had championship matches and I decided to go away. Like, for example, you know, we had a championship match which fell actually on a Monday. We decided to go away for the weekend, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. We came back Monday and it was just a bad mistake because we... <laughs> It was just a lack of discipline. You know, we went away for the weekend and a luxury five-star resort and we're eating and, you know, we're having a good time. I ended up gaining several pounds and we ended up losing the match because I ate too much. So you have to be disciplined. And sometimes, look, a lot of players do what they're comfortable with because sometimes they just don't like the local food. And I can relate to that. Now, in terms of uh, Evanesian, listen, guys, she's a defensive player. All right, she's taking out some really good, solid players. I just said Anna Blinkova. But Kenwin Jong in three sets. Kenwin had the opportunity to win that match. He was up in the third set, but Elena gets the balls back. She has very good stamina. She's very disciplined. I don't know if she'll have the power edge on the forehand. I would lean to Jasmine on that. I'll also lean to Jasmine on the 
athletic ability. I'm going to lean to Jasmine on the serve ability as well because I think Alina's serve fails her because here's the thing. She pushes such a grueling defensive style that her serve starts to fail her. And if, if you guys have never, have never played tennis, look, I'm part of a great tennis club. I play recreational tennis. I play as many matches as I can. And the reality here is if you've never served after just a long, grueling match, you won't realize how tiring it is to serve. It's your strongest shot. It's your fastest shot. It sets the rally. And this is why you see a lot of the older players take so much time in between serves. There's no serve clock on the second serve. So a lot of players abuse that rule. Serving is grueling. This is why I told you early on last season that Elena Rabakina, there's no way she's going to finish the season healthy because she was killing it with aces. I'm surprised Alicia Parks finished the season healthy. That's one tough girl. That's why I promote her so much. She's amazing. She finished that season last year leading the tour in aces per match, and she did not have a single injury. She's tough, guys. She's really tough. Now, Elena, we're back, and I told you, look, I don't think her body can hold up. She's a little bit more fragile, and I think she's got to – look, some players just don't like lifting weights. You know, I do think she needs to bulk up a little bit, but then again, she's got the testennial issues – where she can't really process nutrients. So that's an issue as well. But nonetheless, Elena, as the match goes on, her serve gets really weak. And I think I can see Jasmine stepping in on that second serve. I have to go with Jasmine to win this match. That's going to be the pick. I just think from A to Z, I do think between the lines, Elena's a better shot maker. That's what she has going for her. Between the lines, she is a better shot maker. I'll give her that because that's what defensive players do. And when you guys hear me talk about these defensive powerhouses, I'm pretty much telling you that that player is good between the lines. They have great stamina. They're good at getting balls back. And they're mentally tough. You have to be mentally tough if you're a good defensive player. But the speed advantage that Jasmine's going to have in this match is I just think it's too much. Elena's not that fast. She, she can close out on clay. It's a slower surface. But Jasmine just being the much better athlete, I think she will have the forehand edge. I have to take Jasmine to win this match. So Jasmine to win this match on the money line. That's the overall pick. And we are going to go with Vavara to win at least one set. Now, Mira's laying some heavy chalk, guys, some serious chalk here, and I don't know how much longer she can do it. So I like Vivara to win at least a set. That's plus money. That's the pick, guys. Enjoy Tennis in a Minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. Stay tuned. We have two more picks to talk about. Be right back.